Why are there so many locks for 3D printable dungeon tiles? Well, it's kind of a long story. It's the story of how 3D printable dungeon tiles have evolved over a short period of less than 10 years and grown to become one of the most popular reasons for RPG players buying 3D printers today. Presented by me, Danny the 3D Printing DM. If you play D&D, chances are you've heard of the things you just saw a few seconds ago, dungeon tiles. Put a bunch of them together and they become 3D representations of dungeons and other locales that players might find themselves adventuring in. The reason D&D players love dungeon tiles is because they can be incredibly immersive and engaging for both players and dungeon masters. As a result, dungeon masters have been crafting them for ages. Companies have been selling them for just as long. And you may have seen 3D printed versions as well, like on my channel. But 3D printed dungeon tiles aren't nearly as old and they've evolved almost as quickly as 3D printing technology has. Now let's go back in time a bit. 3D printable dungeon tiles started back in 2010. To give you an idea of what a headline was like for 3D printing back then, MIT 3D printing a playable flute was newsworthy. Nowadays, I can just print on my own little functional ocarina of time on a $200 printer. But seriously, relatively few people had access to a 3D printer in 2010 compared to today in 2019 because 3D printers were still a super new and emerging technology that the world was only beginning to discover. Now, back to tiles. The earliest record I could find of a printable dungeon tile was on Thingiverse from May 2010. Fun fact, there wasn't even 3,000 items on Thingiverse at this time. Before May 2010 is over, another simple dungeon tile set is uploaded along with an improved version. Interestingly enough, these tiles look surprisingly similar to our modern ones. They have a locking mechanism built in and space for magnets made for a metal board. I call these the forgotten tiles because I don't know whatever came of these sets. All I know for sure is the guy who has the bragging rights to say he made the first fully modular locking printable dungeon tile is a guy named the rooster. Just saying. All jokes aside, they were ahead of their time. It would be several years before the community as a whole would get to see these types of features in dungeon tiles again. The dawn of the modern 3D printable dungeon tile would come several years later in 2012 when Dutch mogul, also known as Ilgotten Games, released the first edition of Pocket Tactics, which he shortly modified into a modular floor tile system. Over the next few months, Devin Jones, who'd go on to found Masterwork Tools and go on to create OpenForge, would also release his first dungeon tile concept on Thingiverse, which was originally based off of the Rooster's initial models. Check out that remix. These were probably the first dungeon tiles shared online. And this is the first example of a trend that can be seen throughout all of printed tiles history. The innovations seem to come in bursts and come from multiple sources. These early dungeon tiles weren't very complicated and they were mostly functional. They had one striking difference though, they didn't lock. Ilgotten Games tried to solve this by creating these tile racks and creating second published locking mechanism that I found on record in 2014. It was really simple and it worked kind of like Legos, but the tile set wasn't as fleshed out as OpenForge was and it ultimately never caught on. In reality, while a lack of locking mechanism was a concern, it wasn't that big of a deal because other popular non 3D printed tiles like Dwarven Forge didn't come with locking mechanisms either. So this challenge wasn't really addressed on a wide scale until a few years later. At this point in 2013, Ilgotten Games and Devon took their modeling in different creative directions. Ilgotten Games started focusing more on their fully 3D printable games, including lots of printable miniatures, while Devon decided to expand on fleshing out the tile concepts he had. What emerged in October 2013 was the first version of OpenForge tiles. Devon started releasing new OpenForge tiles and scatter pieces regularly on Thingiverse for free, with a vision that one day there'd be a set of free, open source dungeon tiles that the community could then build on. As 3D printing became increasingly popular over the next few years, the OpenForge tile set slowly grew and that dream started to come to fruition. 
Eventually, new commercial players entered the 3D dungeon tile space in late 2015. A relatively new printable terrain company called Printable Scenery released their first dungeon tile set in July of 2015. Not long after, in October of 2015, reigning papercraft terrain company Fat Dragon Games emerged on the 3D printing scene as well and launched their first printable dungeon tile Kickstarter. Both Fat Dragon Games and Printable Scenery took existing dungeon tiles to the next level and introduced higher detail sculpts than OpenForge had previously, but they came with a premium cost, something that was still relatively new to the printing community at the time in 2015. While Printable Scenery had been creating 3D printable terrain for longer, Fat Dragon Games tiles used a square locking mechanism that sought to make tile locking a new standard in the community. In early 2016, only a few months after Fat Dragon Games' extremely successful Kickstarter, Devin introduced OpenForge 2.0 beta tiles in early 2016. The new 2.0 tiles continued to push the concept of new locking methods. He introduced a new base that allowed for magnetic joining, and he even had paperclip locking. Clippy would have been proud. Eventually, Devin settled on joining the tiles using single pieces of filament, although the filament method of joining never really gained popularity among the tile users. While the quest for the perfect lock was just beginning, the number of other available premium tile sets continued to grow as time went on. By mid-2016, three years after OpenForge 1.0's release, it was clear many in the DD community had officially embraced 3D printing tiles and spoke with their wallets, frankly, attracting a lot of new competitors, products, and producing several record-breaking Kickstarters. 2016 was the start of the next era of evolution I call the dawn of the printable tile Kickstarter. Now in May of 2016, Printable Scenery also introduced their first dungeon tile Kickstarter, the Apocalypse Ruin set, still with no locking mechanism. This Kickstarter success would go on to position Printable Scenery as a key player in the 3D printing tabletop gaming community. In October, Fat Dragon Games' Dragonlock 2 Kickstarter successfully funded, raising almost double the funds of their first Kickstarter from the previous year. And following that, Rocket Pig Games launched their first successful Tiles Kickstarter as well, raising over 50k in their first run, introducing their own proprietary Tilescape locks. Outside of Kickstarter, others started to jump in as well. Famous cardboard dungeon tile crafter Wylock released the first set of printable tiles called True Tiles in May of 2016, the same month as Printable Scenery's Kickstarter. His tile solved the wall problem, plaguing existing one and two inch tiles. Additionally, the open source dream was also happening. Other members of the community began adding their own OpenForge tile set and sharing their own creations to build the total tile set and free options that were available at the time. It was a really exciting time in the community. The buzz was real at this point and more and more people were joining specifically for tiles and printers were just cheaper than ever and the technology was getting better and better every year. Now we know this is a video about how dungeon tiles evolved and I'm talking about Kickstarters here, but the two are deeply connected, especially when it comes to tiles. The commercialization of these dungeon tiles, the market demand at this time, the product validation that these successful Kickstarters showed, it really forced companies to offer more than the last and make a better product than their competitors, at least to differentiate. So before 2016 was over, the community had all of these new tiles, and it was time for even more companies to make more tiles. <laughs> okay, I suck at that. <laughs> Before you speed through the next bit, Karate Kid montage style, let me slow down here. October of 2016 was a particularly special month in printed dungeon tile history. Here's why. Printable Scenery had finished their incredibly successful Kickstarter in June, and Fat Dragon Games had just finished their wildly successful Dragonlock 2 Kickstarter on October 11th to be exact. The main quest was over. The galaxy was at peace. Remember that quest for the perfect printable tile lock? Well, a week after Fat Dragon's Kickstarter ended on October 18th, 2018, Printable Scenery released OpenLock an open source printable locking tool to connect dungeon tiles that was released under a Creative Commons license. The idea behind OpenLock was to provide this tile connecting mechanism that worked really well and could be used by different communities to prevent having so many different systems creating compatibility issues like we see in the software world today. A few weeks after that, on October 30th, 
Fat Dragon Games announces their own evolution called Dragon Bite. While the clips looked similar, the way they worked was actually very different. The key difference was the way the clip gripped the base. Open lock grips on the outside while the Dragon Bite grips on the inside. Both companies agreed to go back and update the tiles that they were working on that they had just kickstarted successfully and retrofit them with these locking systems for their own respective systems. And eventually they ended up releasing adapter locks for each other's systems. So if you bought the Fat Dragon's Kickstarter, you could also print out printable sceneries, tiles, and have them connect with each other. Now this was an important step in the culture of the community because it set a precedent for commercial companies coming together for the greater good of the community. Something that would really come to matter as more competitors entered the printable tile space and as additional tile systems would go on to be made. Which is exactly what happened. 2017 would be the rise of the tile Kickstarter, bringing with it a wide variety of new dungeon tiles entering the market. From the end of 2017 through all of 2018, there were over 20 printable dungeon tile Kickstarters according to Maker Fun 3D. This means that you could expect between one to two dungeon tile Kickstarters per month. And that's only printable dungeon tile Kickstarters. That's not minis or anything else except printable dungeon tiles. Over this period of two years, modelers made everything from traditional two inch, three inch tile cavern style to city tiles and sci-fi tiles. Companies like Game Decor experimented with printing tiles vertically with the dungeon work set. And you had people building on this foundation and just adding straight up variety. Most of the new tile sets adopted the open lock system, but many decided to introduce their own locks as well. For reference, at the end of 2016, there was open lock, dragon lock, and tile skips. By the end of 2018, there was also infinity lock, puzzle lock, open peg, axolote hex, oversnap, and probably some more that I forgot. Infinity lock was the only locking system that was compatible with open lock and dragon lock, and there are adapters for all three systems including open forge connectors for all three now as well. Puzzle lock and axolot hex were locking systems made for hex tiles, while oversnap and open peg both aimed to solve the locking problem through vertical connectors as opposed to horizontal ones. And here we are today, at the beginning of 2019. Modelers are still introducing their own printable tile locks. There are more people joining the 3D printing community than ever before, and there are now even Patreons of creators making additional dungeon tile sets to help flesh out existing sets after years of making variations of base sets. I'm not sure how many more tiles and locks we can invent, but I wouldn't be surprised if the next evolution is right around the corner. Now it's your turn. Is there a direction you think tiles are gonna be going in the next year or two? Is there a tile set that you absolutely love? A lock system that you think is the best? Let the community know by leaving a comment below so together we can all grow. If you want to learn more about some of the modelers in our community, check out this video on 10 Miniature Modelers. I think you should follow. They are awesome. Thanks again for watching. Happy printing and happy gaming.